appreciate you very much getting that ready. And thank you for the musicians. We're going to do the Lord's Supper this time, and we're going to do like we normally do and let you come by and get your elements first, and then I'll go back to your seats, and then we'll do them all together. Okay? And we'll start with this side if you want. Come on. Amen. Thank you for being here to participate in the Lord's table today with us. And I want to take the scripture and read 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And the word of God says in verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Say thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for allowing your body to be hurt and crucified for us, Lord. We remember it today in Jesus' name. The scripture goes on to say in the same manner, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Lord Jesus, thank You so much for what You did for us on Calvary so long ago. We appreciate it very much. 
And Lord, we, we don't take it lightly. And today we remember it. And say we appreciate you a lot. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if any of you got to uh, have been keeping up with what's happening in the world, but uh, kind of a, some really sad stuff happening, scary stuff. How many of you have seen some scary stuff this week happening? Anybody seen anything that kind of worried you a little bit? Um, I've been, I was watching a, a special this week on uh, artificial intelligence. Anybody ever know what that means? Raise your hand if you know what, what AI is. How about ML that's connected to that? Anybody ever heard that term, AA, AI and ML? It's called machine learning. Think about this for a minute. They're able to teach machines now, computers, computer-generated items, to behave like a child would when you're teaching them. And you can actually teach them through trial and error, and over a period of time, they begin to develop a personality of their own. And how to, they, they learn uh, this artificial intelligence. Pretty soon, they're thinking on their own. And their machines are going to be actually doing that in the near future. How many of you have seen the cars that drive themselves now that you get in and they drive in the same situation? Except, imagine what would happen if that sort of intelligence got in the hands of wrong people. I'll be sharing something in a couple of weeks with you on that. I'm, I'm just not quite ready to share it yet, but we saw that uh, deep state thing the other night and, and I came away just like astounded and flabbergasted to know what's really out there and how much uh, information is being uh, gathered by our government, that sort of thing. Right now, we're probably being recorded by the NSA. And uh, any, if you have a cell phone, anything that's on your cell phone, being recorded by the NSA, they're listening and watching and storing this information. Now, of course, uh, if you don't have, their, their theme is, if you don't have anything to worry about, or if you don't have anything to hide, don't worry about us. That's their, that's their statement of why they copy everything you say, do, anything you buy is all being tracked. Now, that could worry me a little bit if I was not a Christian. But, and I would probably be a little upset. But, you know, I really am not. Because if they listen long enough, in a day's time, they're going to hear a lot about Jesus, wouldn't you think? You know, and, and I'm thinking when, it, when whoever it is is listening to us today and they start hearing, and we're reading the Word of God, that means they're listening and hearing the Word of God every time they copy us. So, hey, let's go for it, you know. <laughs> that doesn't worry me. But I know some people are pretty worried right now. They're worried about the, the situation in the world. They're worried about their retirement. They're worried about their money and that sort of thing. And, and they just don't have peace. And today I just felt led to share this with you from the book of Philippians on finding peace in a, in a troubled world. You know, if, and if you're worried or afraid today, uh, or if you're unhappy, if you're grumpy, how many of you are grumpy? I get up grumpy sometimes. Ask Miss Vonnie, you know. She gets up grumpy sometimes, you know. And, but uh, we, we all have those days, sometimes we're just not happy and we're, we have problems and sometimes we're worried, we're afraid. And uh, this particular scripture is written for people like us because uh, your life's not bad as you think it is. You might think it stinks and listen, it's not near as bad as you think it is. And the Bible has a better plan for you and me on how to act and how to respond in this world of trouble. And so finding peace in a troubled world is the theme today. And it comes from the book of Philippians chapter 4, if you'll go with me there this morning. Philippians chapter 4, and I'll begin reading with verse 4. The scripture says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if, virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those, these, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Let's pray this morning as we look at finding peace in a troubled world. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the word and I thank you, Lord, for Brother Paul writing these great words down for us, Lord, because a lot of us are going through trying times and sometimes people, even God's people, get an unhappy place in their life, Lord, or a, a down period where they're just uh, overcome by sorrow and worry and 
Sometimes we get grumpy, Lord, and forget how wonderful that we really do have it. So, Lord, I pray today that you'll help us all to, to gain a new insight and gain a new mind in you and find peace, Lord, in this troubled world. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and all God's people sit. First thing that I really think Paul is telling us here when he says rejoice always is choose to be happy. You know, we can choose to be sad if we want to, you know, and, and a lot of people do. Uh, you see, happiness is a choice. You choose to be happy or you choose to be sad. It's really up to you. It starts right there, you know, in, in your mind, and it's, it's what you make of it. Your life is going to be what you make of it. And uh, Paul wrote this stuff uh, when he was in the Philippian jail. I mean, he was jailed and chained, basically, and facing serious charges. And he wasn't getting out of jail very soon. In fact, later on in, in 2 Timothy, uh, he talks about the time of his departure was at hand. The fact that he was getting ready to be executed for his crimes, and yet this letter written, one of the prison epistles written to you and me so that we can have joy in the time of our trouble. Because if Paul can be happy, chained to a Roman guard and that sort of thing, I think we, we should be able to be happy too. How many of you have been chained to a uh, guard in prison lately? Not many of us have. And yet Paul says, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We can be happy if we want to. Proverbs 23, 7 says it this way. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat, drink, and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart's not with thee. Listen, it's what you think about and how you think. Are you thinking, are you thinking that you want to be happy or are you thinking you want to be sad? Are you thinking about your problems? Or are you thinking about the Lord and, and the wonderful things he's done for you? Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A lot of people are going around with their heads hung, in, you know, their heads hung down between their shoulders, and they're poor me, my life stinks, and it's just terrible. Listen, if you go through life thinking that all the time, of course you're going to have a terrible life, you know. And Paul says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." And again, I say, "Rejoice." And here, if a, if a prisoner been, been beat half to death numerous times could be happy in spite of the circumstances, I think you and I can as well. So. The first thing that Paul was trying to emphasize in this scripture was choose to be happy. Second thing he talked about is let God rule your spirit. Let God rule your spirit. I talked to a, a new Christian this week. He called me and he was having a hard time. And he said, I need to come talk to you. And he came to my office and he said, man, I'm, I'm just struggling. I said, what's wrong? He says, man, he said, I, I was in traffic the other day and somebody cut me off. And he said, I wanted to run them down and hurl them. He said, the old man was coming out in me. I said, that's normal. <laughs> Some of you are like, how many of you are like that? You know, we, the old flesh jumps back up, and we, so we prayed, and I said, you're going to be all right. You're just normal. And that's a normal occurrence, you know. And, but, but the fact he cared that it was happening and wanted it to change, he wouldn't even have cared if he wasn't saved, would he? But God was talking to him, and so he left my office, and he, and he gave his life back over to the Lord. He was already saved. He just kind of turned it back over to him, and, and he'll be all right. He'll grow and, and mature. But see, let God rule your spirit. No matter what's going on in your life, uh, don't make angry people your friends. Don't hang around angry people. And don't stay angry overnight. It's okay to have fights once in a while, but don't stay angry overnight. Let it go. Forgive those that do you wrong and, and, and start over every day with, with the people in your life. Ephesians says it this way, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So when you go to bed and you lay your head on the pillow, let it go. Forgive it and, and forgive those that have hurt you. Proverbs 22 verse 24 it says, make no friendship with an angry man. In a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. If you hang around people that are mad and that's all they talk about is the bad stuff, and pretty soon you get that attitude in you and, and you go through life with like a you know, snarl on your face and a chip on your shoulder and, you're, and you, people bump you and rah, 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 you just snap at them you know, because you have a really bad attitude and you're not letting God rule your spirit when you do that. Ecclesiastes says it this way, he says, A fool folds his hands together and eateth his own flesh. You see, when you're mad at somebody, you're really not hurting them. I don't know if you know this. Medical people tell us, and, and you know, they've studied this for years, that uncontrolled un, uh, anger and anger that's held inside does a terrible uh, job against your physical being, your physical well-being. Your body is actually harmed by you being angry and holding that anger inside. It depletes... Uh, certain chemicals in your body that you need to, to, to stay on an even keel and pretty soon you, you spiral right into depression because of your anger. Not because of what the person did, 
but because you held the grudge and you held that anger inside of you and didn't let it go. Proverbs 25, 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. As you watch the news today, you, you're watching a whole generation of teenagers that have never been disciplined and have never been told no and have never been taught that you can't do certain things. And you see them doing all kinds of stuff, don't you? Tearing, they break windows and they destroy cars and they burn buildings and that sort of thing. And they, in the name of social justice, they, they justify their anger and their, their uh, spirit that really is uncontrollable. And here it says that you, if you don't have rule over your own spirit, you're like a city that has walls that have broken down. See, that you're, you're an easy target for the enemy when you are just angry all the time. So Paul said, let the Lord rule your spirit. Let him rule your spirit. Don't let anger and bitterness and that sort of thing rule your spirit. Third thing he said in this passage of Scripture was stop worrying and start trusting God. He said, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about... Now, none of you worry, right? Let's be honest. Any of you worriers, just kind of quietly put your hand up, put it right. And some of you are worriers. He said, don't worry. <laughs> Stop worrying. Be anxious for nothing. He says that we're supposed to just trust the Lord about stuff. Uh, worry about nothing, he said. Pray about everything. Be thankful for even the smallest things that, that happen in our life. And then tell God about it. The other stuff that you can't do anything about, tell God about it. You know, with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. But don't just sit there, oh, poor me, it's going to last stinks, and I'm, everything's going downhill. No, it's not. No, it don't stink. <laughs> it's not going downhill. It's going to get better. Why is it going to get better? Why is our life going to get better? Tell me. You tell me. Don't know. Why is your life going to get better? Are you connected to the God of heaven? How many of you are connected to the God of heaven? How many of you are His children? How many of you think God loves His children? How many of you think God protects His children? How many of you think God's going to provide for His children? How many of you think when somebody messes with you, God's going to get them because you're His child? Folks, what do we have to worry about? It's going to be okay. Did you know this? We get the riches that Jesus has. We're part of the inheritance. His inheritance comes to us. Whatever He has, we're going to get some of it. I kind of like the sound of that, don't you? How many of you have ever been to a, a reading of a will where you inherited something pretty big? Anybody? You were lucky enough. We got, she inherited something. Anybody else? You, you were reading of a will and you actually inherited something worth something. Some of you are afraid to put your hands up. There's numerous. Yeah. I like will. Wouldn't it be neat if your rich uncle, they called you one day, these lawyers showed up and they said, uh, we need to speak to you. And you, you automatically, oh no, the FBI is here. I'm going to jail you. You know, and they said, no, 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 this is good news. Come on in here, we're, we're, we're private. Listen, this person has left you, your great, 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 great uncle has left you because you're fourth in line in this family, and are you so-and-so number four? Yeah, I am. He's well, your great uncle left you something of great, great value that we want to tell you about. Now, are you sitting down, sir? Yes, sir, I'm sitting down. Your great uncle has left you $50 million dollars. And we are here today to help you set this up in your life. We want to help you manage it. We want to help you invest it. And anything you need, we're there for you. And we're here today with a check in our hand to, to start the deposit into whatever bank you want us to go to. How many of you think that'd be good news? Would you like to hear that? But would it be cool, wouldn't it? Listen, our, our, our news from our Heavenly Father is greater than that, okay? Because we have something, he went away to prepare a place for us, as John 14 says. I mean, he's preparing these great big homes for us there. And uh, poor Jimbo and Sarah, they're, they're trying to, in the middle of trying to get a home, aren't you, Sarah? And it just, had, things haven't worked out. And they had one good contract they thought was going to be it, and it fell through. And I said, just switch way, God's got something good, you know. But see, we have something even better on the other side. See, it's not just going to be floating around in heaven and playing a harp, bring, bring, you know. No, no, no. Heaven is much like earth except a zillion times better, okay? And God has prepared all those great things for you. And, and if you're part of his family, why do you need to worry when, when we've got all this stuff on the other side? Think about it. All this is is dress rehearsal for in, in a little uh, skirmishes that we're fighting for the kingdom of God here on this earth while we're alive. 
we get all the, our inheritance a little later. And so don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Be thankful for even the smallest thing. I'm thankful that my little sister Betty's here today. She's been sick, and she said, I'm coming to church. I don't care what the doctor, I'm coming. I have got a thing over her, ma her mask over her face so she doesn't catch a cold or something. And, but she's in God's house, isn't she? Yeah. That's, she, she's, a, she's an overcomer. Boy, she was prophesying at the door a minute ago and talking about God and the scriptures and how she's open. I'm thinking, yeah, you go, Miss Betty. That was good. You know, that's, that's kind of that's attitude we all need to have. First Thessalonians says it this way, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You say, I, don't, I can't thank Him for some things. Listen, Scripture says, what are you supposed to thank Him for? Everything. You say the bad times? Yeah, even the bad times. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Fourth thing, the Scripture says there that God's peace will fill and protect you. When you do these things, you put all these things in place, so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep and guard your hearts and minds. And here's verse, verse 7. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through who? Through Christ Jesus. Isn't that good? Christ, through Christ Jesus, not through Muhammad, not through Buddha, not through uh, mind over matter, no. <laughs> he will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I, I did a little word search on that this morning, and, and, I, and I found out that it's a Greek word, and this guy's freshly out of Greek. You probably have studied this, haven't you? And how do you say that word? For, it's no idea. He's a he's a he. <laughs> my pro, hey, I had the same problem. My my professors were some of them were like Koreans, and I couldn't understand them. But but uh, this word that is used throughout the Bible for peace, and ninety seven times in the New Testament, for railroad, it, and it's spelled. It looked like Irene the way it was spelled, but it's pronounced for railroad. And it's used 97 different times. And, and I looked up the, the biblical usage. What did it mean? Well, it, here's what it means. When it says he'll keep your hearts and minds, that he gives you this peace to, to guard, protect by a military guard, either to prevent hostile invasion or to keep the inhabitants of a besieged city from, from flight. Keep, keep you in and God's family, but also keep the enemy out. That's pretty cool, isn't it? When, you, when he says he'll guard your hearts and minds, that's what it's talking about. And uh, I was, I, Paul frequently used the word peace. And if my count is accurate, move it one more slide. If my count is accurate, Paul used the word peace 43 times in his letter to the churches. 43 out of the 97 times this particular word is used in the New Testament. Brother Paul used it half of that 43 times, you know. And he and it constantly would, would, was trying to encourage his brothers. Here's one place in 2 Corinthians. He said, Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful. There he is again. He's always encouraging people. Wasn't he? You need to be happy. Be joyful. Grow to maturity. Encourage each other. Live in harmony and peace. Then the God of love and peace will be with you. Kind of interesting. This, this passage of Scripture in Philippians 4 here uh, it, it, it starts, starts because there were some women not getting along in the church. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> if you go back to the first part of this chapter, he said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see my joy and my crown, so, crown, so stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Now, here's the, the second verse in Philippians 4. He says, I urge Yodia and Syntyche to live in harmony in the Lord. They were having some kind of a... They were good women. And he mentions what all the good stuff they'd done, but they didn't. They were at each other's throats for some reason. And he had to correct that. He said, I, I, hey, make them women get along. <laughs> and then he goes into this passage that we're studying today about how to, how to have peace in a troubled world. Because those women evidently didn't have peace among themselves, but Paul's letter not only corrected that, but it helped us as well because he wants each of us to have the same peace that he had being a prisoner there in the, uh, what, the Roman prison. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus in John chapter 14. You, we read this passage so many times. The first four verses, you know, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if I go to prepare a place for you, you know, etc., etc. You've heard that. If you go on down in this chapter, verse 27 says, I'm leaving you with a gift. Listen to the gift that Jesus left you. Peace of mind and heart. 
That's a good gift, isn't it? And that's, he used the same word Paul used, that Ferrero word. And he, and he says, and the peace I give you is the gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. Now, do you know when he was making this statement? Anybody tell me when he was making this statement? John 14, what was getting ready to happen? Getting ready to be arrested, wasn't he? Now, look what he says in verse 30. Same chapter, he's, in first part he says, don't, don't be afraid, don't worry, I'm going, I'm going to go prepare a place, I'm coming back, and I'm leaving you this gift of peace. Look what he says in verse 30. I don't have much more time to talk to you. <laughs> Listen, because the ruler of this world approaches, he has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me so that the wor world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. He said, trouble's right there. It's coming around. It's coming down the path. <laughs> Can't, I don't have time to talk now anymore. Told you enough. But he said, I'm leaving you my peace. It's going to be okay. Listen, I don't care if NSA is listening or watching. Big, I don't care that Big Brother is watching everything we do. Who cares? They're hearing some of the Word of God this morning, aren't they? <laughs> and they're going to hear about Jesus every time they listen in on the church. See, see, you don't know this, but you are considered a terrorist now. You're on the terrorist list of America. Did you know that? Evangelical Christians are on the Department of Defense as part of the, the terrorist organizations, extremists in America. <laughs> oh, boy. They're going to be bored if they listen to us very much, aren't they? We're really doing a lot of plotting. We're going to plot to have a, like a dinner on the grounds next week. Everybody bring something to eat, you know. Go see Sister So-and-So. And, you know, we're going to the hospital today. And Yeah, real, I mean, we're a real threat, aren't we? <laughs> but see, the world and the enemy thinks we are. And, and in reality, we are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Because we are the ones that snatch people right out of the jaws of the devil. We're the very people on the earth that can keep people out of hell. And yeah, we are a threat. I'll wear that badge, that badge proudly, won't you? But I'm not worried. Just like Jesus said here, he says, I don't have much more time to talk because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me. But I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. And the question for you today, are you going to do what, the, what the, you know the Lord requires of you so the world will know? That there is a person on your block there is a person in your home, there is a person in your car, there is a person in your family that's going to follow the Father and do what the Father asks us to do. You see, I, I used to sing a song years ago when we sang a lot called, You're the Only Jesus. You know, you're the only Jesus that the world's ever going to see in a lot of places. You know, and how you act, how you react is, is critical. It's important. It's important that we live just like Paul lived. He was chained to a Roman guard and writing things in prison to, to tell us to, to be happy and rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. And, and I close with this, and I think it's one of my favorite pictures. Picture of Daniel in the lion's den. <laughs> Woo, they had sentenced him to death, threw him in the lion's den. And hopeless in the eyes of the world. And yet, Daniel said, Daniel 6.22, My own God sent his angels and shut the mouth of the lion's. Yeah, the lions are all around us, and the, the, the left hates us, and the enemy hates us. We had people going by the riverside this week. Somebody went by in a truck screaming, I hate Jesus, and Jesus profanities, you know. Of course, we report at the sheriff's department over there, and they're going to you know, try to track it down. But still, don't, don't be surprised if the world hates you. Don't be surprised if you're persecuted at times. But listen, you don't have to let that get you down. Listen, you don't have to let your life situation get you down. You can have a happy life. You can have the peace of God in the midst of a troubled world. That's what it's all about. <laughs> that's why we have the book, and that's why we have the promises from God. And, and whatever you're facing right now, know this for sure. There's a God in heaven that loves you very much. And if you're his child, he takes a special interest in you. He takes a special, and he's going he's gonna to take care of you, and he's going to make things turn out. So you can be encouraged today knowing that He does care that much about you. And, and if, you, if you don't have Him as your Savior yet, you haven't become one of God's kids, that's what we're all about. We try to help people find Him and, and establish that relationship with Him and so they can have Jesus in their heart and He can change their life and give them the same gift, the peace that He talked about. He can give them that peace and they can have it too. We're going to close with prayer at this time, and, and we, have, we won't have a, like a come-down type altar call. We'll have an altar call in which if you want to talk about it and you have something you want to pray about, that prayer room at the library is going to be open, and we're going to be around for a little bit. 
We have about 30 minutes before the next service, so we have plenty of time to talk. And if you want to talk about it or you have something special you want to say, I want you to come. I know we have one brother that asks for special prayer. Would you like to mention that, Brother Walter? Amen. And also, Brother Bill, right behind you there, his sister Jackie is in, in the hospital down in Lakeland, correct? So we need to, to pray for her. And uh, Miss uh, uh, Bonnie has been taking up and take care of her. So pray for, pray for Jackie. Also pray for Miss uh, Betty to help her overcome these things that are happening to her right now. Uh, Miss Brewer's uh, daughter fell yesterday and got hurt and hurt her shoulder. That's why Miss Brewer's not here. So pray for them as we go. Uh, but let's pray. Let's pause for a closing prayer, and then the team is going to come up and do, you're going to do one more song, Miss Jesse, if y'all will come. And uh, but the the altar's open if you want to come pray here, or if you need to, to speak with one of us or me, I'll be in that corner room back there for the next few minutes. So let's pray. Our heavenly Father, Lord, we lift up before you, uh, Brother Walter and Charlotte, as they travel, that you'll protect them, Lord, bring them safely back, give the family comfort. Be with Jackie, Lord, down there in Lakeland that you will uh, work in whatever is the situation is. Lord, we don't know the full uh, extent of it, but what you do. So we pray for healing. Pray for uh, Miss Betty, Lord, that you will strengthen her immunity, Lord, and, and help her to, to gain strength today. And Miss Brewer that's not here, Lord, be with her daughter that has had this fall and heal her body. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. And, and Lord, we do rejoice. And Lord, we choose to be happy today. And we choose to follow you and you promised to give us your peace, peace of mind and peace of heart. So, Lord, we claim that today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.